Yay, here we go. Tech Tool Bonanza session at NCC 2021. How great is this? It's so great to have the team back together. Uh, some of us have fled the state to Arizona, but that's okay, Bob. We don't hold it against you. We uh, still others, others are still in their classroom. Shannon's still in her classroom. Uh, yeah. But it's great to be here uh, back with uh, Tech Tool Bonanza uh, from the Reimagine team. It's exciting. We're going to have everybody introduce themselves, and we're going to be introducing you based on the way that you are going to be presenting today. Today is going to be all about eight tools, four minutes per tool, uh, and that's where we're going to get started. So we're going to have everybody introduce themselves. We're going to get started with Patrick Green. Patrick, good to see you again, my friend. Hi. Yeah, it's great to be here. You know, it is really fun to get back together with this group. I, I'm so thankful to be a part of you uh, and the the powerful stuff that we did with teachers as people were struggling to get going with online, which has turned into hybrid and distance and crazy and all that. So it's been an awesome year. Uh, I'm Patrick and I'm glad to be here. Awesome. And he's going to be the, the, the killer app Gmail is what he's Oh, sorry. Yeah. I got three tips. <laughs> yeah. For G on Gmail, the killer app. Killer app. Yeah. Steve Murphy. Hey, well, hey, everybody. It's great to be back here again um, as well. I'm coming to you from Enumclaw, Washington. So I'm teaching at Enumclaw High School and tech coach there. Uh, just been a, a unique year with a ton of learning. And I, I think everybody's learned a ton and excited to share with you uh, a tool called Moat that's going to be able to help you quite a bit with being able to provide audio feedback. So excited to be here. Fantastic. One of my favorite tools. We'll be talking more about that. Monica, Fluency Tutor. I've not heard of this one, so I'm excited. You this have is not heard of this one? Come on no, now, Jeff. I haven't. I know. You're an old There's a tool school, I haven't heard of. You're an old school teacher where you used to use like the cassette tapes and the recorder in order oh, to yeah. record students reading. Yeah. That's what I'm going to solve. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Uh, instructional tech coach from Moses Lake. Awesome. Thanks, Monica. That's going to be great. Uh, next up is Shannon. Hi guys, I'm Shannon Cunningham from Black Diamond Elementary School in the Enumclaw School District. So I work with Steve and Jen, and I used to work with Bob when he was a teacher in the in the district. So happy to be here again. I am gonna do Padlet again. I did Padlet in, in the first one, but I'm gonna show you some new stuff, different stuff uh, awesome. in Padlet today. Very cool. Tyler. Hey everybody, um, so I am Tyler Adlin. I'm an instructional tech coach and ELA teacher from Sunnyside out in the middle of the state. And I'm gonna talk about Pear Deck today because I have leaned on it heavily, especially if you're in some sort of blended environment right now with students in the classroom and at home, it is a lifesaver. So if that's you, that's what I'll be talking about. Very cool. Uh, Jen. Hey everyone, Jen Longmeyer. Uh instructional technology TOSA in Enumclaw School District. So I get the privilege of working with many of the people on this screen on a daily basis. I will be talking to you about Flipgrid today. It's one that you've probably heard about before, but my hope is to show you more capabilities of the tool than just a selfie stick recording. I love that. I love that. Uh, Stefan. Hi, my name is Stefan Troutman. I am also a tech coach in Moses Lake, but I'm at the high school and we are covering Google Sites because it's a low floor, but I don't think there's a ceiling. Like you just yeah, kind of can keep going. So uh, awesome. we're going to cover every nook and cranny over the course of four minutes. In awesome. four minutes. <laughs> in four wow. minutes. Everything you need to know in Google Sites in four minutes. And Bob, who retired last year and is now working for Harbor Freight's Tools for Schools, is joining us from his retirement home in Arizona. Bob, good to see you again. Hey, great to see you, Jeff. I'm excited to be here. I won't take four minutes, Stefan. I'm only going to take three, but I'm going to tell you about some physical tools to support your digital tools and how you can do that uh, in your, your project-based classroom. So, woohoo! Awesome. All right, yeah, dibs we on Bob's extra minute. <laughs> no, I, awesome. it. I told you it's i called for him. sale no wait it's for <laughs> sale that's rest that long because i don't know that you can do that i don't need to breathe i've been training this for this for weeks, man. <laughs> <laughs> so just to remind you again we're going to have eight tools and that doesn't count bob's extra special thing that is going to be here at the end so we're going to go through eight tools uh, i've got a timer everybody will have 10 minutes, or sorry, 10 minutes, four <laughs> minutes. I don't know where that came from. Four minutes. <laughs> I looked down at my timer really for a second. 
four minutes per tool to get us started. And I know some of you are wondering because I loved watching Stefan's face when I started this and I've got this cool little slideshow and he's like, what the heck is Jeff How? doing? How are you I doing know. that? See, I, I get more than four minutes because this is called Prezi Video. And if you haven't played with Prezi Video, Prezi Video allows you to do this cool thing where you can make these presentations. These just happen to be images with text but you can actually upload a PowerPoint presentation into Prezi Video and then go through your slides and it does all the animation. I'm just clicking like a left, right button uh, and it'll go through your slide deck. I can even, if I wanna highlight somebody, I can bring that slide to the front. Wow. We can talk about what's on that slide. I mean, look at that mustache. For some reason, it's that. a little grayer. The goatee's a little <laughs> grayer that, now, yeah. all I right. don't know. I, mean, I just wanna can, make sure, really... Jeff, did you start the four minute timer on yourself? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but this is this is called Prezi Video. And one of the cool things Prezi Video allows you to do is you, you start Prezi Video and then you can go into Google Meets, uh, Microsoft Teams, and Zoom. And so basically my video is running through Prezi Video into Zoom uh, is the way that this is running. But you don't have to do it that way. You can record videos right in uh, Prezi video. And so I know that we're talking a lot and during the reimagine and we're still talking about one of the skills that comes out of this that we're all going to continue to use is instructional videos. And what a great way to add a little pizzazz to your instructional videos. And I know somebody's wondering how much it costs and it's free. How great is that? Prezi video. Most people only remember Prezi. You remember Prezi? When it first came out, it was the presentation software that you zoomed yeah. in and zoomed out and was great for about five minutes and then you got a headache. Uh, so they have, during the pandemic, they started working on Prezi video and released it a little while ago. So, uh, it's here and uh, ready to go. And that's tool number one. So Prezi <laughs> video, uh, just, if you haven't seen it, there it is for you. And we'll be using it throughout today's, throughout today's session as well. All right. Next up should be Patrick with Gmail. And hopefully everybody has the rights to share their screen. I should have probably have checked that before we got started, but I think everybody's got the rights to share their mm -hmm. screen. Uh, so we should be good to go. Patrick, let me know when you're ready and I will start the timer. <laughs> uh, well, I think I shared my screen incorrectly. Uh, so I'm not ready to go. Yay. Yay, our first failure. Love yeah, it. Yeah, well, I mean, we might as well start off with a failure and yep. fail fast. So yeah. yes, folks, I am going to talk with you about three Gmail tips that really can help you survive teaching in a pandemic. And if you are like so many teachers out there, you've poured your heart and soul into this year. You've overplanned, you've overtaught, you've overloved these kids, you've, you've provided so much support. And yet, you still get ugly emails occasionally from angry parents, like this one right here, where you're getting lots of blame <laughs> and people aren't being very loving back to you, no matter how much you've put into the year. And so, of course, you don't judge. You're like, hey, everybody's having a hard time. So you're going to reply thoughtfully and kindly and, and, and help this person know that you are partnering with them, helping their child. So you're going to reply to them. But before you do, you're going to be a little bit snarky and you go up to forward this to a colleague to share your struggle with them. And so when you go to forward, you say something like, uh, can you believe this person? And you hit send. And then you panic because you just realized you didn't hit forward, you hit reply. But, but you're not going to panic because you're pretty tech savvy and you turned on undo send in your settings years ago and you set it to 30 seconds. So now there's this nice little button here that you can hit undo and breathe deeply because that didn't send. You can delete it. And now you can write a really nice e email to that person. Here it goes. Nice email. But you don't want them to think that you're just emailing all day because you are a teacher. You're designing learning. You're facilitating your coaching. You're doing so many things. That's why you're checking your email at 6 p.m. tonight. So you write your nice email, but you don't send it because you want them to know how busy you are. So you do schedule send and you pick a date and time, and you're gonna to choose tomorrow, give them time to simmer down, and you're gonna do it for like 5 a.m. because <laughs> you know that shows that you know, you're getting up and working early, and you're gonna schedule send it that way, and you're gonna feel really good about that. Okay, and, then, and they're gonna access that when they're feeling better as well. But your day's not over. You go back to your email inbox, and you have one of these. This is, here comes tip number three. You get one of these emails that's totally from a different generation where there's no punctuation, there's no respect, there's no protocol. 
but you see this as a learning opportunity. Rather than try to figure out how to do 17, oh, the kid's having trouble with number 17, you go to your reply, you hit your three little caterpillar, your caterpillar right there, you go to templates, and you've already prepared an unintentionally rude email <laughs> response that you are going to click on, and there it is. Dear wonderful student, I hope you are well. I'm sure you've exhausted all of the other support avenues, such as our class FAQ, our classroom discussion stream, and must not have gotten the help you needed. I'm so glad you reached out. I am here to help, but before I do... I would like to support you with some intervention on email etiquette. You can review my asynchronous direct instruction around using informative email subjects, greeting and salutations, and using complete sentences at this link. Once you've had the opportunity to review the lesson and reformat your email, I look forward to supporting you with your other questions. Send. And folks, those are my three Gmail tips that will help you survive a pandemic. And if you need screenshots and how to's, I've got you covered. You're gonna head over to bit.ly slash you are welcome <laughs> wow. Wow. wow wow oh man Please. that chris <laughs> bar high a problem <laughs> oh, yeah. wow. Your Gmail, though. there was only two emails in it you yeah. are not a real teacher because your inbox would have a lot more i use the Wait. snooze button you know the snooze button the snooze in the email button. i snooze just... everything get it out of there i don't want to see <laughs> Snooze it. If you snooze it, it does. You don't. You just wait, right? That's the whole idea. Yeah. You just snooze, you snooze it, it, and it it'll stay. Yeah. Future yeah. Patrick's problem. Wow. <laughs> future Patrick. Yeah. Future Patrick's problem. <laughs> Oh, very cool. I love that. There are so many great little hacks like that inside of things like we use every day, like Gmail. You know, it's, it's great to review those and look, and maybe there's one in there that, that you haven't used. Uh, I always forget about the templates. That is one that I, it's always like by the time I've written the fifth same email, I'm like, oh, that's right, there's this thing called templates and you can go create a template. Uh, the, the other th cool thing I like is most of those features at some point were in their labs, you know, and how cool it is that they use labs as a way to funnel that stuff into uh, everyday Gmail now it's sitting there. So very cool. They used to call it canned responses, didn't they? Canned responses? Yeah, I think you're right. It was, yeah, and now it's called templates. Cause I, I remember I went in to try to- response, right? It's a canned yeah. response. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I, I went in to turn on the lab canned response and I couldn't find it anymore. And I'm like, where the heck is this thing? And I had to do some research to figure out that it's just part of the, the Gmail again. So, well, and so, well, Jeff, thank if you, you want to know where to turn that on, go to bit.ly slash you are welcome, uh, as I showed it. And I do have the screenshots there for you to enable all those features. Perfect. That's great. So good. All right, Steve. Uh, I seriously have next to follow with... that. Like with Mo, I'm, yeah, I'm worn out. I'm worn out from listening to that. <laughs> Talk as fast as you I'm did. sweating. <laughs> Woo. Okay, yeah. deep breath. Level. All right, so here we go. We'll talk about moat here a little bit. Let me go ahead and pull up a newly created Google Classroom for us to be able to talk a little bit about moat. And this is something that has been significantly helpful for me uh, for two reasons. Number one, I think the biggest issue that a lot of us have had with this pandemic time frame and teaching hybrid or teaching whatever we've been teaching is time, right? Do we have enough time? Okay, do we have enough time to be able to do the things that we want to do? And the second thing is, is trying to be able to make connections with our students. And so trying to be able to make connections with students that you only have remotely or virtually has become a challenge, especially if it's just through the typed text. So Moat basically is able to work with Google so it works with Google Docs, Slides, Sheets, and also with Google Classroom. That's its, its prime function. And it, it provides a faster and a more efficient way for you to be able to have a more personable and then a friendly type of feedback that you can give to your students. It's more personal. They get a chance to hear your voice. Um, it's easier for you to be able to provide that feedback on how you want to do it. So basically, it's audio feedback that you can do in a comment. You can use it within Classroom as well. And again, like it says here with the more features, with the features and the uses, that it's more efficient, it's more personal. Um, I haven't used it this way yet, but I'm going to try it out in the next couple of weeks is have students be able to add moat and be able to respond in audio as well. Um, I've used it with collaboration as a tech coach. So the idea of collaborating with other people that you're doing work with, um, as well as you can use it with a comment bank. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different things here. And there's also a cool little tweak um, with emojis and how you can use emojis with moat. So basically if we look at classwork, if I were to post a, an assignment. We just have a practice Google document that's here for us to be able to take a look at. If I open this up, 
the way that moat works is if we are able wanting to make a comment upon the document if students or i myself were able wanting to make a comment upon the document and i wanted to comment on say the united nations i click on comment here and it would pop up with this little icon right here which is moat and so when i click on it it gives me the opportunity of being able to ask my question through audio and so if i click on this you'll see that the timer counts down and i could say what is the united nations i need some help Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so understanding the United Nations, or I could comment back to that particular student. When I click on done, okay, it'll then pop up with the comment. Okay, and as we look at that comment, we get a chance to be able to hear what it has to say. Once we click on this, it'll pop up. It'll give a little icon. And so if I click on this, you'll click see on the timer counts do. down and I could say, what is the United Nations? You can hear that, that that audio is there for the student to be able to hear and they can listen to your voice giving you comments or giving comments back to them and giving feedback back to them rather than just typing it in. You also can go through, if we were to look at, or excuse me, go to the classroom here, and we were to look at uh, the one assigned and this student, this amazing student, Eli Murphy, who happens to be a 15 year old in Enumclaw. But if he was working on this particular assignment, if I opened it up and I wanted to comment on his assignment, okay, and I'll put something in here, um, as far as when it was formed. I didn't even know he put it in there, by the way. That's pretty cool that he put that in there. But if I wanted to comment on his assignment over here, I could again click on this. It'll count down for me. And you'll notice that every time it does so, it's counting down from 30 seconds. I'm just going to click on cancel because this is a free extension on Google, but it's 30 seconds maximum when it's free. You can purchase an additional program to be able to do more features and more things with it, but it gives you up to 90 seconds worth of time. But here's a couple of hacks that'll really, really help you. If you wanted to make a comment, for example, and said, um, you know, try this next time, and you wanted to say it, or excuse me, save it, you could click on, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do it that way. Sorry, if we click on this and go back to here, and I were to say, you know, hey, try this next time, and click on here. And basically it was a, an opportunity to get them to, sorry, it's hard to type when people are watching me. <laughs> I got my eyes closed. Are you faster? Yeah, I'll there watch. you go. Okay, so if we wanted to do that, we could save this, go to our comment bank, add it as a comment. And once it's added, if I go back to comments and let's say I hadn't made this comment, if I just started to type in try, Okay, or for example, if I wanted to go over here on this document and click on this to be able to say, try this next time. Once I did that, I can click on that, click on comment and it adds my audio right in there that way. So I have a more cool. efficient way to be able to put it. And then the final thing that I will add to that is that over here, this is a cool thing of moat that I actually just found out the other day. If you go colon and then type in, let's say thumbs up, it gives you the opportunity to click on a thumbs up what? emoji emoji that you can put in there. Okay. So you can type in whatever you wanted. You go colon and go smiley face okay, or smile. It gives you a smiley face emoji. So there's an efficient way for you to be able to continue to communicate to your students with your voice creates that relationship and it saves you time as a teacher. That's moat. Awesome. Thank you, Steve. Wow. Cool. That is so awesome. Thank Hi. you, Steve. And uh, I've got a little something for you if you haven't heard, and we'll make sure that this makes it over into the chat. But one of the things that Steve shared was that you only get 30 seconds unless you are a friend of the Shifting Schools team. Moat is our first sponsor of our podcast. And uh, being the first sponsor of our podcast, if you go to justmoat.me slash shifting schools, you get 90 seconds per voice moat for free. You get to transcribe your notes. They'll be automatically transcribed for you. You can translate it for ESL students. Uh, you can extend your uh, free version for uh, three months uh, of the unlimited tier. So uh, head over to justmoat.me slash shifting schools. And we'll make sure that makes it into the chat during the session as well. Uh, we're excited to have Moat be our first sponsor of our podcast. Uh, and be able to give this to anyone who is uh, who is working with us uh, and has been working with us. So it was such a, a great way. To, I, when I saw that on the thing, I was like, oh, I'm going to hide this as a just one more thing if you haven't listened yeah. to the podcast yet. Uh, so we're excited to have them as a sponsor. All of our sponsors are tools that we love. And and Moat is is definitely one of those. You know, it's such a great tool uh, for, for teachers to use. 
uh, with and, and Patrick, thanks for turning away so I could type. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> anything I can do to help. The, uh, Mo also just released, and I mean just released like two days as we're recording this. Uh, you can now have Mo inside of Gmail. If you haven't seen that yet, you can actually, if you start a new Gmail, there'll be the little Moat symbol, that little, that little purple M. Uh, if you click on it, you can actually talk right into an email and send the voice uh, send a voice email rather than a typing email, which to Patrick's point, you might want to make sure, you know, you could rant at a parent <laughs> and then undo it and actually say something nice. So you know, there's, it's there's also in Google stuff. slides now too, where you can yep. do yeah. a remote recording and embed it in Google slides. Yep. 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 Yeah. So many great ways, such a great little add on tool uh, and, and great people over there. They're, they're a massive team of four people by the way. So it's a, a, quite the little startup and it's been fun to get to know them the last couple of days. All right. That brings us to Monica and Fluency Tutor, which I have never heard of until this moment in time. So I am really excited. Well, again, Fluency Tutor can be used for all grade levels. I think, uh, you know, English le learners, world language learners, all of that. It's not just for uh, beginning readers. So I love all of Text Help's programs, Read and Write for Google, Equatio, RiQ. They're amazing, but Fluency Tutor is what I wanted to go over today. And like I said earlier, in the good old days, in the 80s, 90s, whatever, we use those cassette tapes to record our students to reading. And we had to take those little cassette tapes and take their pencil and rewind them and all that good stuff to hear our students read. I also, when I wanted my students to work on revising and editing their writing, I used to use those good old PVC pipe phones, read what you wrote and be able to listen. Some people call them whisper phones. Well, Fluency Tutor can do that now on our Chromebooks. We don't have to all sit around one little tape recorder with our books to hear the stories. So Fluency Tutor is an app and they have passages that are in the program that you can use or you can add your own content. Um, we have a district license this year, so we've been putting in a lot of passages and then we can share it off as a district, which is pretty cool. You can share these passages through Google Classroom or through Google Drive to your students. You can filter passages by Lexile levels, reading age, or just keywords, which is pretty cool too. When you send a passage off to your student, they get a screen that looks like this a hero with four legs, they're able to listen to the passage. Now, if it's a teacher that they want um, a cold reading, so they don't want their student to have heard the, the text before they record their own voice, you can turn it off so that they can't listen first and they can only record their voice. So they can listen as many times as they want. They can choose words to get a dictionary, a picture dictionary, or you could translate into Spanish or a language of your choice. Uh, you can hear it with different, uh, uh, Mexican Spanish Paulina will still speak in English, but she'll have an accent, which is kind of fantastic. Oh, wow. Cool. So once kids do their re recording, they can listen back there as many are times. Some special war hero. So they're listening to it first, and then they record their voice. As they record their voice, they can let's start the recording. They're recording their voice, going, going, going. And then when they stop it, they can play it back as many times, listen to their own reading, and then they can turn it into their teacher. So when the teacher gets the recording, they can, like the free version is pretty robust. If you just have the free version, you'll be able to listen to your students read. You can give them a thumbs up or ask them to reread. If you have the paid version, then you can mark mispronunciations, hesitations, omissions. You can record last words and get a words correct per minute, which is pretty cool. If your kids use the translate, the translation or the dictionaries, you're gonna get a vocab list. So you know what to focus on with that as well. Uh, what I really love as well is Fluency Tutor has an extension and this extension works on both the teacher end as well as the student end. So as a teacher, if I'm on a website and I find some text, whatever, that I think would my students would enjoy reading or I want them to read, I can click on the Fluency Tutor extension and it will suck the text from that website straight into the program. Again, where kids can hear it and then kids can record their voice reading it. You can edit it as well. Wow. On the kids side, the Fluency Tutor extension, my favorite part, again, I want kids to read what they wrote. So here's a essay that I wrote as a, 
And I can go ahead and click on the Fluency Tutor extension as well. It takes my very own essay into the program. It lets me listen to my own essay. Monica is greater than Stefan. I think we all know that is true. And after listening to my own writing, then I can go ahead and record my voice and turn that into my teacher as well. So not just the Fluency program, but the extension as well are pretty powerful tools as far as I'm concerned. Great job, was, Monica. Really cool. Stop. So proud of you. Love that essay. Nice job. Oh, great essay. Mm -hmm. That was a great essay. All right. Do Very you have cool. the button on, on ready for when Stefan goes? Yeah. Uh, what grade levels have you seen using this? Have you seen it all the way through high school or is it mostly elementary? Like, you no, know, those primary teachers are using it all the time, especially our remote teachers. Um, upper intermediate, they're using it again, the way I showed you by having their kids take their own essays and listen to them and record their voice. Mm. I've encouraged it with my world language teachers. Um, I don't know, Stefan, are they using it? <laughs> yeah, and they're, I mean, they're digging in, it's super cool. I mean, like all those different features, super powerful, right? I mean, that translation feature, like yeah, if you've got, really I huge. mean, talk about equity and if you've got a diverse set of learners in front of you, like, holy cow, it's crazy. Trying to fight yeah. the sun here. It's, it's shiny in Moses Lake today. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. Well, thank you for that. That's the first, first for me, I, I really, it's amazing what these tools can do nowadays. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just incredible. I think the two things that I remember though is the blue headphones in the picture. Like, did everybody have those blue, really horrible mm -hmm. headphones that made your ears hurt <laughs> when you're done? And the oh. whisper phones that was, yeah. I had my kids make whisper phones. What about, we used to like, we attempted clickers at one point. Like we would ask questions and every student would have an individual little clicker. And we thought that was just gonna transform education, but the software was terrible and it was a pain to pass the clickers out. They were just so cumbersome. We spent thousands of dollars on the clickers mm. and never got bang for our buck. <laughs> yeah. I think it's I mean, also it's... important to make the distinction that there are some of us on this team that taught with cassette tapes and there's some of us that learned with cassette tapes. <laughs> <laughs> hey now. Ouch. Oh. Uh, Monica. Wow. What he taught with. Monica. I got your back. <laughs> Sleep with two eyes open, buddy. <laughs> okay, I could say something there, but. For her birthday, yeah. my 13 year old niece got a record player and record. So uh, cassette tapes aren't too far off, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. You watch. They're going to come back again. And we're all going to be wondering where, where are all of our cassette tapes? Uh, it's right oh. after vinyl as everything comes back around again, right? <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right, Shannon. All Padlet. right. So I'm going to show you Padlet again. I know I did this in the first round, but I think I just showed you the basics of Padlet then. And so I want to show you some other cool things. This is my go-to tool. This is what I use all the time and I love it. So when you go into Padlet and if you want to remember how to get into Padlet, it's pretty easy, padlet.com. You can, and you can go watch the other tech tool bananas and I go through that even more. But when I go into make a Padlet, if you click on make a Padlet, there are so many options. The first one is the wall, which is most people use where you just kind of spatter information but did you know that you can also, you have a shelf, which is pretty cool, but I love, you've got a map. You've also got a timeline. So I kind of want to show you a couple of those things live in action, kind of, sort of. All right. So if I go back here, um, this is one I used with my kiddos. This is a recent one where I had them read a text and this is their, the wall. So what I love about Padlet is when kids go in to create a post, they have lots of different ways they can do it. They can record themselves audio, an audio version of themselves. They can add gifts. They can create videos any way they want to, to respond. They get to have some choice in that, which they absolutely love. I think even more so than Flipgrid, sorry, Jen, but even more so than Flipgrid. <laughs> um, the other one is I love the shelf where we've done read alouds and we have the, we've recorded our read alouds and then we have the kids go in and we're really trying to hone in on different strategies, reading strategies. So questioning predictions, and we have the kids respond after they've read and they get to choose the column that they want to respond in. If they saw some words that they liked, they get to do that. So that's just one way to use the shelf. All right, another great tool. And I am going to force my, my reimagined friends to participate in this forced participation. I'm going to put a link in the chat and it is a link to the map. 
on Padlet and I'm gonna open up the Padlet. And I'm going to ask, if you look at all of us in this room, we have traveled probably between all of us, we probably hit almost all seven continents. So what I'm gonna have them do is put in their most uh, memorable vacation that they've ever had. And you would just do that by clicking the plus sign here. You get to search where you want it to be. So for me, it was Johannesburg, South Africa. It's going to zoom to that location. You can put your name in there, have your students put their name, maybe some three, three facts or three memories, and then you hit enter and it's going to put a pin in that map. And then as you zoom out, you're gonna be able to see where everybody else has been. You could do this as a great get to know you activity. Where were you born? And give a chance for kids to see where they are from. Or you could do it as a report where they're, they're each studying a part of the world and they have to create a Google slide. You can embed the Google slide right into this. Then kids can go in and share what they have learned. So that is a fun one. Look at that, Very we've got lots cool. of great places. Then one more thing I wanna show you and then I'm done. Um, uh, if you go in here to gallery, uh, you there's a lot of great templates or ideas that are already in here. So I wanted to find one for timeline because I hadn't used the timeline before. So there's one right here with the uh, life cycle of a butterfly. And if you click on that, you can use the timeline to kind of show the life cycle of something. Or if you want it, like I could see Steve Murphy, he's a history teacher. I could see him using this to introduce a concept. So that's another cool tool of Padlet. And that's all I have. Awesome. Well done. Okay, I cannot so believe good. you dissed my flip grid for the party. <laughs> sorry, and sorry. we are supposed to be better than Stefan and Steve. Steve and Stefan, whatever. <laughs> okay, so we are better than Stefan and Steve. So we've got Padlet and Flipgrid, both great tools. Okay. I'm leaning a little bit more towards the Padlet side. I'm oh. sensing some internal strife. I just want everybody to remember that when we get to my <laughs> section of the presentation here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Stefan. Do you do you think that students, like you were saying, you students are engaging more with Padlet than maybe Flipgrid. Do you think it has to do with the choice factor of it? Like I get to choose whether I want to do audio or, I mean, Flipgrid is video. It's amazing, but it's only video, right? Well, and especially at the grade level I teach, it, when, when you're teaching that fourth, fifth, sixth, and I imagine even seventh grade where they don't necessarily want their face on the screen. They want to be able to have that anonymity. How do you say that word? Yeah. Anonymity. And so I think having that choice choice of whether or not to be in front of the video or not be in the front of the video, I think is important at this age group. I think at K-1-2, they love creating, <laughs> and I'm sure is going to have some great tools for that. Oh, I, I can only imagine. Kids updates. They're amazing. Yeah. These, these companies are, I tell you, they are innovating right now at the speed of a click, aren't they? It's just incredible. Every time you go back into a tool, I, you find five new things that you're just like, oh, I asked for that last week. Uh, that's pretty cool. Well, so, what, I, what uh, I love about it also, Shannon, sorry to jump in, but you're fourth, fifth grade split, right? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm a third, four now. I was a third, fourth, fourth third, yeah. fourth. So third, fourth grade split. And that example you just showed us had all the different options, right? And so, I mean, mm. it was like, it wasn't like you had to be really talented to be able to know how to mm. technology wise do it. You got third and fourth graders that are doing it. And that, that was a huge demonstration of learning. So that was awesome. Yeah, it's very cool. It purchased cool. Padlet this year because again, we see the value in it for K-12. So we purchased Padlet, Fluency Tutor, and Pear Deck. Ah, interesting. Ooh. Well, that was a great segue because Tyler's up next with Pear Deck. Nice work, Monica. That was that was excellent. All right, Tyler. I, I, paid, I paid Monica for the transition. We worked it out ahead of time. Don't worry. All right. So I am, oh, I'm going to start my timer because I don't trust myself. Uh, so I'm going to talk about Pear Deck. It has been absolutely valuable to me this year. I'm gonna actually show you just all the free stuff because um, I'm cheap. So here's all the free things you can do with it. Let me share my screen so you can see it. So the quick overview of what Pear Deck is, uh, it's really a way to deliver content without having students just sit there passively. It's a way to allow them to engage and interact while you're sharing new information or teaching a lesson or something like that. So I'm gonna show a few things that it can do You'll notice here I've got a slide deck. You can do this also in PowerPoint. Don't ask me how, because I only know how to do it in slides, because that's what I use all the time. Um, but you'll notice down here at the bottom, you see where it says students choose an option. On this one, it's got students write your response to get there. So it's an add-on. So I'm going to open this add-on so you can see what it looks like. 
all I do, I build my slides with the questions that I want, and then I can go over here and I've got some different choices of question types I can add in there. So you'll see a few different ones. There's one that has been blowing my mind recently and I can't wait to show you that. So I'm gonna, I click start the lesson. Couple things to note about this. You can actually do a student paste one. So if you wanna house or package some asynchronous content, you can do it um, through a student paste activity. Hmm. I'm gonna show the instructor paste activity. So I'm gonna click it and to save time, I have it loaded over here. Oh, I see people have already joined. Good, we'll see where this goes. I'm gonna click start class. And as I do that, I'm going to actually show you the student side of things. So here's my student over here. I'm going to have them at first, they can say how they're feeling. Well, we'll say we're feeling pretty happy. I'm happy to be back with the crew right now. So then they get in here. The nice thing about this is I'm not relying on a projector to show what's on my screen. Every student is getting it on their own device. We talked about kids being at home and in the classroom. This makes that a lot more simple. Um, so I got this right now I'm in instructor pace mode so I'm going to click forward you'll notice the student slide will also change and now they've got a question here. Uh, let's say I'm going to say 2020 uh, that's when World War II officially ended in my brain. As an instructor, I can show the responses part of what I love is this is anonymous right, so we can see as a class how we're doing but i'm not necessarily singling anyone out. If I want, I'm going to do this to everybody right now, I can actually lock the screen. So if a student is continuing to do something and you're like, no, 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 I got something I need to clarify, I can lock the screen, pause everybody, we're all focusing back on the information. Again, you can do some short responses. Sorry, team, I'm going to skip past this, you don't get a chance to answer this. Uh, here's another fun one, because we have some social studies teachers in here, and I feel like it's just gonna, it'll take like <laughs> nine years to explain the technological <laughs> advances. So we're going to get past that. This is a fun one uh, with the numbers. I actually have, I don't play with this too often, but it gives me a range and it shows me kind of where people are putting the number and also telling me where the average is. So that's all the fun stuff, but here's the one that's been blowing my mind. And I have one more minute to show this. This last one, I embedded some web content into the slide and I wanna show you what it looks like on the student side. So here's the student screen and right next to it is a Google Doc that's a live Google Doc. I can go in here and add comments. You'll notice there are other people on here with me and it's a space instead of sending students somewhere else and trying to navigate and get them to the document you want, it's right here, it's right on their screen and we can work with it right within that. Once this is all done, then I can end my session and as a teacher, I'm going to name this what I name all of the things that I'm trying and it's sample and I'll never find it again. And you'll notice I have a dashboard here where I can go in and I can actually look at all the results. It collects it, it saves it, it saves pretty much everything for all of time so that you have all that data when you need it. So there's Pear Deck in four minutes. Wow. Uh, Fantastic. Have you been using Pear Deck with your kids? Yeah, I've been using it a lot and I've been surprised at first I was like, nah, you know, they're probably pretty comfortable just sitting behind their screen, not participating. Um, but I was really surprised at how receptive they've been to really a request to be pulled out of their screen in a way that is kind of safer for some of them who might feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. unmuting or turning their camera on. It's a way for them to still say like, I'm part of the class, I'm engaged, but I'm doing it in a way that works for me. And so my my students have been just eating it up. They love it. Um, so I've been That's using great. it a lot this year. That's I cool. used it with a group of fifth graders. They loved it. And the kids who never would engage and interact before were all over it. And they were putting in several answers and going above and beyond what they had been doing before. So it was like, oh my gosh, it was, it was crazy. It was awesome. Yeah. Super underrated feature on that was like right there at the beginning where you're like, I'm going to click on, on the green circle. I'm happy to be back with the team is Tyler, something I stole from you in the spring was you said relationships are built in 30 second bursts and like, there's your in, you know, yeah. like if a kid clicks that, like that red face, I mean, you're just getting this quick little temperature check and it's just, I mean, they can skip it, but you know, I mean, and then that shows up next to their answers. And I mean, that's an opportunity to reach out and develop those relationships. And if there's one thing we know about any kind of learning, it's that relationships are key, especially this year, right? And I just think that's kind of a super cool, just passive feature built in. And I and love it's, that I, share what students do, but it's anonymous. Mm -hmm. so that no one knows who did it unless the student fibs on themselves. 
Mm -hmm. And I love the, the smiley face feature at the beginning, since it's tagged with their data at the end, I've had times where I'm like, wow, this is a lot lower than I would have expected for this student, and they put the frowny face. And now I have a better context of their assessment data to give me a more holistic picture of the student. So yeah, I've, this has been one of my go-tos this year for sure. Awesome. Yeah, the feature that I've been encouraging my remote teachers to do is you can start it synchronously and go through your first couple of slides and then midway through your lesson, you can switch it to asynchronous. So in your mm -hmm. Zoom, you can get them started and then they can continue on their own independently. Oh, that's great. What a great way to launch a lesson, you know, yeah. launch some learning uh, to get those kids in there. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you, Tyler. And speaking of assessment that you talked about, we do have uh, Tyler is running a six week session on assessment. Uh, and so we're looking forward to that. That'll start right after NCCE. The week after NCCE, we'll be meeting on Tuesdays for six weeks, uh, all focused on assessment. So we're looking forward to that too. That's going to be a, that's going to be a blast. So thank you for doing that as well. And uh, you've, I mean, we can pretend it's NCCE right now because we recorded this. Like, how are you feeling, Tyler? You've only done like 35 sessions so far being a featured speaker. Uh, you sticking with it? Are you finding your rooms okay? Oh, wait, everything's virtual. So you don't have to worry about finding your room. <laughs> I just have a coffee pot that just never ends yeah. next to me. That's uh, the beauty of this is I don't have to carry coffee. It's just like an IV at this point. <laughs> you know, you're trained it. for this though. August, didn't you do like 10 sessions a day, 15 sessions a day? Yeah, that was, that was boot camp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. After reimagine five, five sessions a day is just like an easy day. Yeah. There it goes. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Jen Flipgrid, show me, show me the new cool stuff. Or it might not be new or cool, but maybe you just haven't played with it and found it. So what's is my number one now. app that I tell teachers to investigate because you can have an entry level with a five-year-old and you can use it with college students, adults, whomever. So it's easy enough and robust enough that it works for everyone. So I'm going to take you through and show you the teacher side of things and then the student side of things. So I'm gonna go into my NCCE group here. And what's great on the teacher side of things is here are all my topics in my group. So I can totally um, go by content or age level or subject level when I create my groups and then the content, which are my activities lie with inside of those. So I can create my own, create my own question. I can download as a teacher one that has already been created and I just, snag it, put it in my own topics and I can edit it. I can, um, this is my new favorite, with all the asynchronous learning, you can make a repository of your own teaching video. So let's look at it from a student view. Pretend you're in math, lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, lesson four. You could have all of your videos stored right here. My topic's frozen. Kids cannot create their own videos. They can't respond to the videos, but all of my math lessons are right here. Kids can go in and find them at any time and watch and rewatch to their little heart's content. Um, as a teacher, so I have all my discussion boards, but the Discovery Library, this is where you can go in and download thousands of different topics already made. They are completely editable. You can search by topic, by age level, whatever you want, download it to one of your boards. You can edit it, make it work for you. It is, there's tons in here. It's really cool. You could, you could spend a whole day in there. I'm gonna skip activity because you can go look at your activity level. Mixed tapes, think of the 80s when we would make our little tapes of all the best songs on solid gold. Well, now you can make, a, I know Stefan, you don't know what solid gold is, I'm sorry. But you can make a mixed tape of the best and taking bits and pieces from all year long. Think of the, the uses with portfolios that you could do with this, um, shorts videos. So the shorts videos use the Flipgrid camera with all the capabilities of Flipgrid camera, but they are independent standalone videos. So they're not attached to a topic or a grid. I can go make my video, copy the link, and I can put it in my LMS. I can put it in slides. I can upload it to YouTube. It does not have to stay in Flipgrid. And then if you're a pen pals person and you want to expand the walls of your classroom, go find a grid pal. And they are all over the world. Let's see if my computer will. And you can again search for grade level. You can search for an area that'll pop up here in a second. Maybe. All right. It trust me. Oh, there they are. They're all over the world. So you can go in and find what fits for your classroom and expand the walls of your classroom. Now for students, 
they can go in and they can record a response. Really easy. A five-year-old can find this big red button. I'm going to actually activate it. You're going to get to see my lovely profile here as my other camera comes up. But I want to show you the tool because Shannon said not all kids want their faces shown. So first thing you can do is you can upload a video clip. You can go microphone only. Look at that. Now you do not have to have a video and click it. I can mirror it, I can mute it, I can screen record. So really important if kids have created something online. Now, here's the other effects that you can do. And I'm gonna start with the board. I'm gonna put a board on here. I'm gonna split my screen and I can do it like this. I can say, nope, I do not wanna be in this video or you know what, I need a bigger space on that video. Now, when I go into my effects, I can add filters. I'm gonna turn myself black and white and I can add text. You can edit, you can customize however you want. You can move these. When you come back in here, go back to your board. You can start and stop the video as many times as you want so that you can reset the board. You can really, these creativity tools for students are huge. It allows them to have that voice and that choice. Also, when you go in and you look, I can see there's three comments on this one. So as long as the teacher sets up comments, you can comment just with the teacher or you can open it up to the class. Let's take a peek at this one that I did. Students, when they record, if the teachers have it open, they can attach a document. So let's say a student uploaded their writing assignment and they talked about their writing assignment and they can connect their writing assignment here. But, oh, look, there is a link here. I wonder what this is too. Oh, look at this. Ah, Jen and Shan site. Hey. Here we go. All right. Hey, yeah. stick to your own tool, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> you can do video responses. You can do written responses. Jennifer L is all over it here. And awesome. the really cool part, I know I'm almost done. Closed captioning on every video. So the accessibility mm. tools, you have closed captioning. You also have an immersive reader, not only on the video itself, but on the directions for all the Flipgrid stuff. Nice. Wow. Lots of, lots of power. Lots of power. Wow. There's so many updates since the last time I've been in Flipgrid. Oh my wow. gosh. How crazy is that? Can we just stop to appreciate for a second that Flipgrid is free? Yeah, I know. Like across free. the board, unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, unbelievable. And they have great help documents. So if you can't figure out where the accessibility features are, you can go to their help and it walks you through it and the Twitter sphere with Flipgrid is amazing. Yeah. Wait, yeah. can the group, someone appreciate oh. the website she pulled up for our- Oh, for our, crying out loud. You know, oh no, go, go ahead. Talk about that no, website all you want. Cause I think I'm here. next. I yeah, think, think I'm next. There's more next. from Jen and I, our next, our session is right after this one. So just follow us to- Super to cool. Session. Super oh, cool. Hey perfect. Jen, that, that was a pretty sweet website you made. <laughs> all joking aside, you should go to, to Jen and Shannon's session, but like strap in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you're interested too, I did a, um, podcast. Um, I'll drop it in the chat during the session. Uh, if you're interested, I did a podcast with the, the number two or number three person at Flipgrid a month before they got bought by Microsoft. Um, and which is why they're all free now. It's a Microsoft tool. But if you want, if you're interested in the backstory about how some of these tools get started and you know how, like they all have this crazy story, it's another like crazy story of somebody hand coding a web page with little boxes of YouTube videos is like originally how the whole idea came. Uh, I won't spoil it for you. You can go listen to that episode, but it's just really, again, really great, great people uh, trying to make an app for, for education. So yeah, and the entire thing's free, which is just incredible. So um, yeah, so good. All right, Stefan, uh -oh. Google sites, my friend. Let's you talk sure? Google uh, Sites. I thought our time was up. <laughs> <laughs> I am looking at the time and I'm assuming we're running long. So I'm going to cut you a little slack here. <laughs> I'm going to share my screen just real quick. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about authenticity recently. It's some work that we're doing in our district. And I've seen teachers use Google Sites for a lot of cool things over the course of this year. And if you were talking about getting kids online and creating their own stuff and being creators and not consumers, then Google Sites is a great place to go. And it's actually super user-friendly. So just like any other Google site or Google application, it can be found here in your waffle or sites.google.com or start a new one from Google Drive. It's Google, there's a billion ways to do any of these things, right? 
So if you want to start a Google site, you just kick, click the big old plus button in the top left-hand corner. And then the cool thing about Google Sites is it's actually really accessible. And what I tell people all the time is as soon as you get good with Google Sites, you're going to start to get frustrated with Google Sites. Because if you're thinking about starting a website or getting kids, more importantly, creating their own websites, then a lot of apprehension from teachers tends to be like, oh, can they use the tool? And give them a blank template, let them play. They're going to learn 90% of it in 10 minutes, right? Because this stuff is all pretty intuitive. So you've got your stuff over here on the right-hand side, right? Insert text boxes, images, right? So you can click on, this is about to get real creepy. As I was testing this out, I have a, I have I have a reason for this, but if you go to my Google Drive, there's just like pictures of Jeff in my shifting yeah, space Google Drive. I, we don't have the time for me to explain, but I, I promise there's a good reason for those being in there and it has, it's, it's not nefarious or creepy. Or maybe it is, you don't know. All right, but if you go, you can go and search directly in here for images. So if you wanted to find like pictures of your favorite uh, baseball team, so mine is the Colorado Rockies, you can search for uh, that baseball team and, that, and then images of that team will come up or maybe that team's management right? Yeah. Nolan Arenado, <laughs> rest in peace, buddy. All right. You can just put those suckers right in there. But if you're a, like a um, SPED teacher, you're probably always thinking about that accessibility piece uh, for students. You can add alt text in there. There's screen readers in there. Uh, if we're thinking digital citizenship for students, those things are creative commons. If you're searching directly here in Google sites, which is super, super cool. These templates, if you're not really into aesthetics, click them, boom, you can import your media here and this stuff is already formatted for you. Super awesome. If you haven't used Google Sites for a while, then, and you're coming back and this is the first time you're seeing it, you're gonna notice that a lot of this stuff here is new. You didn't used to be able to edit your text like this. So they're constantly making these updates, which is super fun. And they're just kind of doing this stuff gradually. There's all this stuff down here. We're not gonna, we're not gonna dive into that a little bit, but again, just kind of click and figure it out and it'll all pop up there for you. We are on, on just one page right here. If I wanted to add a new page, I could just add a new page like this. And then look, it's up here on my home screen automatically. I can click and drag the sucker. Look, now it's a drop down menu. And now it's not super cool. I can also hide it like this. So that way people can't find it, but we can and there's a reason for that. I'll show you here in a second. And then your aesthetics here, you can click some things around and change some of the formatting here. So, I mean, that's, that's Google sites basics, but like, why, why are you using Google sites? So these are examples of the ways that I have seen Google sites used in our district. There we go. Uh, this is something that Monica and I created to deliver professional development for our teachers. Uh, we just call it our remote learning hub. It's a work in progress, but teachers can come here and find all different types of like instructional videos and support. And so it's a good place for static resources, which is kind of cool. Uh, I used this for self-paced professional development with teachers last year before the pandemic hit. And then actually while the pandemic was going, because that's the beauty of self-paced professional development. But all of my content was delivered through a Google site, which was awesome. This is hands down my favorite use of a Google site. It's a breakout room. This is one I made for last year. It's all about this just really poor, suffering person who just really struggles in Moses Lake and how we can help her. And then uh, we moved our curriculum night, the high school online this year. And this is a curriculum night. So this was to reach out to families. But what I think is most important is getting our students creating their own Google sites. And one year when Jeff was working with our, our teachers in Moses Lake, he said, I really think that our students should be graduating with their name as a domain. So if everybody watching this and maybe all of you here on the Zoom call with Shifting Schools could do me a favor real quick and just go to stephantroutman.com. No. <laughs> oh, no. And God help you if you spell my name incorrectly. That's S-T-E-F-A-N-T-R-O-U-T-M-A-N.com. And oh, my goodness, it's a beautiful family and a beautiful man right there. Yes. Now, I am it's not long. proud of how long I spent trying to figure this out. But I can't, if you can help me, if you can, how... I didn't share my screen with audio. Mm, I am so sorry because you need the Get the audio. Experience. Get the audio. We need audio. I got gotcha. you. How come it's not automatically? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I tried, man. I'm embedding audio files and whatever. I really want this site to open up and you listen to the Hallelujah Chorus. But all of the sites that I just showcased are actually right down here for you. But more importantly, on our I... navigation there, over on the left-hand side, you can weigh in on a fight for the ages. Oh, no! It is <laughs> Stefan and Steve versus Sh uh, Shannon and Jennifer. Now, the answer to most people here is very clear who no. is the winner. Very, very clear. Uh, very but clear. if you feel the need to tweet your support, you can use one of two hashtags. You can tweet your support for Steve and Stefan with hashtag Stefan, or your support for Shannon and Jennifer with hashtag Stefan. Down here, I, oh, it didn't come through super clearly, but it did when I tested it for the record. You can actually embed your Twitter feeds on here. So if you are accessing the power of social media, uh, you can embed those things in here. Um, you can customize your own banners up here on Google Sites. This is just a slide. This is just a picture carousel where you can slide. You can just go through pictures of whatever you want. And then, because you all knew it was coming, if you need some reliable information about the people that you work with, namely Monica, you can add, you can create a live, authentic. I mean, this is StephanTrotman.com. This is the core of who I am as a person. This is what's most important. I mean, my please remember my family was on the front page. But if you just need some information about Monica and maybe why if you had to choose between one or the other, Stefan or Monica, look no further than the fact that Monica still has 158 fewer subscribers than Stefan does on YouTube. And so if you would like to subscribe to Monica, you can click on this button. Go ahead, click it, I dare you. Or you can click on this <laughs> button here to subscribe to my channel. Uh, here, you should also note that Monica has eight more subscribe, eight more followers on Twitter than me, which is just a try hard move. She's showing off. <laughs> Clearly, clearly, uh, you know, I would maybe go unfollow her and you can click oh, on- Oh, he's going to my cougars, watch out. If you would like to follow Monica, <laughs> you can click on this button here. Again, Careful. click it, I dare you. Um, and then if you would like to follow Stefan on Twitter, you can click here. And then like, do we really need to say anything else other than <laughs> And then because uh -oh. fair is fair, I do have a Monica's pro pros page over here. Go ahead and click on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's Google Sites, man. Oh my gosh. Uh, and all I did was go purchase a domain. I honestly did it like a year and a half ago because I was like, that's a great idea. And then as I was preparing <laughs> for this, I just rerouted stephanchapman.com to Google Sites, which is absolutely something that we can do with students. That's um, so cool. When I Googled stephantroutman.com, it's blocked by my district. Oh, oh there's a good reason for that. that it's specifically. Blocked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, I'll get it unblocked. Don't worry about it. There you go. That's good. Oh, that's right. You're on. You're on campus. I forgot. Oh, that is awesome. Uh, the other thing to know about Google Sites is when the state of Washington asks, "Hey, can you try and train seven thousand teachers in three months uh, during a pandemic, and you need a website quick?" Uh, those of you that went through Reimagine last spring, it was all built on a Google site. Uh, and here's the crazy part. I have my own server like in the cloud that I could have put it on, but I was afraid that the traffic to the server, it would have, it would have killed the server. Like I don't pay for that big of a server. And the crazy part is we had all that traffic going to the website. We had all these teachers going through our online modules, going in to get all their links and the site never went down. Like you were literally using for free Google's, you know, Google's bandwidth. It's just incredible. Uh, so just a, a, another plug for Google sites there. It does, and it, it's simple, it's easy and so many great ways to use it for sure. When everything you saw there, like that's still pretty basic stuff. And it took me maybe 45 minutes. Now I've used Google sites before. Like I didn't have to learn any of the tools, but like uploading your own pictures and finding those things, you know, like all of those pictures are just like on your Twitter or something, you yeah, know, right. like it's yeah, all built right in. Yeah. That's awesome. So good. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I'm sure everybody's going to be over there. I can't wait to see what the chat is going to be like when this is oh, actually in geez. NCCE, if this is how this session is going. So, uh, well, we do have a, a Bob. I'm so excited that Bob, um, you know, just earlier today reached out and said, hey, we've got something. You know, we talk all the time about tech tools, but we also know that we want kids off screens as well and working with their hands. And so uh, Bob's got some special things from Harbor Freight Tools for Schools to share with us as well. Bob? Hey, thanks, Jeff. Well, you know, I heard uh, Tyler talk about free and I heard uh, Jen talk about lots of power and I heard Stefan say, be creators. So imagine if you're a teacher who wants to power kids up through project-based learning and you don't have all the tools you need. And I'm not talking 
uh, you know, just your digital tools, but I'm also talking about the physical tools to help make learning come to life. If you're that teacher and you're going, okay, how can I do this? And I'm interested in project-based learning. Boy, do I have a deal for you. And it's not a deal, it's free. Um, Harbor Freight Tools believes in the power of hands-on learning and it's willing to support projects by offering free gift cards to teachers uh, for these classrooms who want to solve problems and learn skills by thinking with their hands. And so how do I do that? You see the URL down there, you go to the website, uh, Harbor Freight in the giving back section of it. And in the upper right hand corner here, you'll see a little icon that says request a donation. You fill out a form, you tell them what your project is, and that'll go to Jennifer. And Jennifer will read through those and say, okay, hey, that's viable, um, and send you off the gift card. You can order the tools online, and uh, it's free to you. The uh, Harbor Freight does this all over the country, and, and so I want teachers to be aware of that. We support K through 12 public education, uh, veterans, and police and fire. So uh, if you, if that's something of interest to you, please take advantage of that and, and look at that part on the website. But wait, there's more. <laughs> I want to tell you that, hey, on March 24th, on March 24th, the, for the fifth year in a row, um, Harbor Freight Tools for Schools, which is a division of the Smith Foundation, the owner of Harbor Freight Tools, Eric Smith, he gives away a million dollars to skilled trades teachers every year. The, uh, and it's a prize for teaching excellence. Well, that opens up on March 24th of this year, and there's going to be a million dollars given away in cash. And here's what that means. That's 18 teachers across the country. Um, like I said, this is the fifth year. There's been 70 teachers that have received this prize so far. It's a little over um, 3.5 million that uh, the foundation has given away. There'll be three grand prize winners. That means that uh, those three winners, they get $100,000 uh, for their school and program. 70,000 goes to the school and the program. 30,000 goes to the individual teacher. So there's three of those across the country. Um, and there's 15 second place winners. That's 50,000. 35,000 goes to the school. 15,000 goes to the individual teacher. So if you know of somebody that's a well-deserving skilled trades teacher that gets kids to get powered up at school and think with their hands and is deserving of this type of award, please encourage them to apply for this uh, teaching prize for excellence. Awesome. That's all I got, Jeff. Thank you, Bob. That's, that's plenty. And uh, the thing I love about this, you know, is we want kids working with their hands with computers. You know, there are so many ways to marry the two. Uh, we want kids off screens and, and doing real work. And the idea that you can go and get a gift card and get tools in your classroom. You don't have to be a CTE teacher. You don't have to go beg for the tools from the high school CTE program. You need some, you need some screwdrivers in your classroom so kids can put stuff together. Go get a gift card. You know, uh, have kids doing projects in the real world, not just on computers as well. So I'm always excited whenever we can, uh, we can partner with Bob and Harbor Freight Tools for Schools. Uh, to just spread the message of, of the work that they are doing to get kids to work with their hands. So that's just such an important piece of, of schooling as well. So awesome team. Thank you all so much. I will just, as we are closing this up, uh, remind you, you can head over to shiftingschools.com. We've got all kinds of free resources over there to support you through the hybrid learning, bringing kids back. We have over 30 guides now, over 30 free PDF guides that you can download. All of those have come from emails from teachers. So please, if you have a guide, if you think there is some way we can help, please email us. We are constantly making free guides for teachers as they are being asked. We have our free podcast, uh, which is really focused on empowering PLCs. If you're looking for a way to have conversations in your PLCs, we do all the work for you. Uh, you just need to have, uh, you can download the facilitation guide people listen as a podcast and we give you all the ways to facilitate that. And as we mentioned before, we have an assessment course coming up with Tyler starting the week after NCCE. If you're excited about that, you can learn more over at shiftingschools.com as well. So thank you team. You are all so amazing. 
Uh, really appreciate the, the energy as always, which has never been an issue with this group. Uh, it's never been an issue with this group. So it's so good. Uh, it's so good to hang out with all of you again and uh, to be able to deliver this for NCCE this year. Uh, and let's hope that next year, NCCE, we can all be face-to-face, -face, uh, maybe doing this in a live version as well, which I think would be a lot of fun. So uh, thanks, I don't everyone. know if there's any one room that can handle us all live at the same time. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It'd have to be a pretty big room. All right, thanks everyone. Enjoy the rest of your conference. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Bye.